Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make a bracket to hopefully correct a mistake I made or fix a mistake I made. Uh, sometime back, probably six, eight months ago, um, sometime last, I guess it was last fall, maybe last winter, I made a, a cart or little trailer to pull behind my zero turn mower to haul the spray tank on. Uh, and then later uh, did a video on the hose storage on that. Here's a little picture of that cart uh, uh, a wagon when it was uh, much cleaner and before it even uh, had much use. But as you can see the, uh, the cable holder uh, or I'm sorry the hose holder and the flag mount. Well, I guess most of you that's ever backed a trailer knows uh, how difficult it is to back a, a trailer with a short tongue on it. And this is a very short tongue on this little uh, sprayer cart. But I got myself kind of in a bind, uh, pulled into a place a little too tight, and instead of getting off the mower, unhooking the trailer and backing it up by hand, I tried to back it up uh, with the mower and it didn't turn out too good. Uh, the combination of the very short tongue, the uh, zero turn steering and my inability to do much twisting as I've said before on here I've had open heart surgery had my chest split from my throat uh, all the way down. And I don't have a lot of dexterity when it turns, when it comes to looking behind me. But in the in the end, what I did was try to back it up, and wound up turning the cart over. Uh, here's a picture. Now it's a whole lot dirtier now. It it stays under shelter, but the birds seem to like to roost over it, and there's a lot of dust. But as you can see, it broke the flag off completely. The, uh, the two holes, uh, screw inserts are pulled out of the tank. Thankfully, it didn't uh, pull them out far enough to cause a leak. We'll worry about the flag another day. But over here on, on the other side, the uh, uh, rack that I made to hold the hose, we're going to try to fix that today. As you can see in the picture, what I originally had to hold the... Uh, uh, hose storage vertical was just two holes drilled uh, in this angle and this upright pipe and the two in there uh, held it somewhat or held it vertical. Uh, the problem I had with this was that this being thin aluminum uh, pipe here I couldn't really tighten these down. Uh, without crushing that pipe. Uh, I tried putting an insert in there and that helped but it just wouldn't stay tight. But when I turned this card over it broke out one of these bottom bolts uh, actually broke out the uh, the hole where it's uh, the hole drilled in the pipe. But what we're going to try to do today to fix this like it should have been to begin with we're going to make a collar to go around this pipe and this is a good threaded insert here. We'll bring this back to vertical and have a uh, uh, arm coming out here to put a uh, run a screw through. What it's going to look like is something something like this. We're going to take a piece of this aluminum stock and mill out this leg over here. This is where the screw will go through uh, to the insert in the tank. We'll drill and bore an inch and three eighths or 1.38 hole that that aluminum pipe will go through. We'll drill this with the tap drill for number 632. Then we're going to split it right here halfway on this uh, uh, halfway the hole. We'll drill clearance in from that hole and tap this. 
tap these ends for the 632. I found this piece of uh, uh, rough stock in my supply bin. It's actually got a, a saw cut already in it over here, but I think that's going to be about right. I measured this off, and this is this will all mill out right here. This piece only has one factory edge on it. So we need to clean up the other three sides before we even start. Let's turn over to the mill now and get this piece cleaned up. Alright, I carried the work piece over to the uh, soft sco uh, Scotch white wheel and cleaned up this one factory edge on here. And I marked three and a half inches, uh, put a scribe line across here at three and a half inches. So what we're going to do is set this in the mill vise on that one factory edge. I'm going to mill this down to that line. And nothing about this is absolutely uh, critical dimensions. But once we get this mill down, then I'll turn it on the, on the side, clamp it like this in the mill vise, clean this edge up, get it flat, then turn it around and get the width to the 2.13. I'll be doing that with this uh, one inch, uh, one inch two fluid end mill. Thirty-six thousandths to go. Okay, we have about 400 thousandths left to take off on this side. I think I'm going to turn it back over and see if I can get most of that out of this uh, where that saw cut is. I'll have to re-zero my DRO, make a pass and re-zero. The only thing worse than battery going dead in your digital calipers is the battery going dead and you're not having another one. 2.512. Okay, we got 382 thousandths to come off there. Alright, that's 2.132. That's really in 2000, so that's fine business. Alright, I'm going to carry this over to the uh, workbench, put some die chem on there, and lay out a 
what I'll do is lay out these lines right here and then carry that over to the bandsaw and cut it off. Alright, I got our area marked off here that we want to cut out with the bandsaw and that existing saw cut that was in here uh, wouldn't have come into play in, in any case. But uh, let's go to the uh, bandsaw now and cut this out. Alright, I've cut that plenty of prior to the line on both axes, so we'll go back over to the mill now and clean that up to the, to the scribe line. Alright, we got that sawed out now, and as I said, I left a little bit proud of the line. So we'll come back in here. Now, I've got a 5 16th uh, end mill in here. I would like to have used a, a bit smaller one, but this is the, uh, the smallest that I've got that is long enough uh, to reach down, and that's going to be cutting it close. I'm going to clean up first, not quite to the depth. I will right, we'll move into the to the scribe mark and lock our Y axis. Now we'll lock our X axis down and I believe I can do that full depth in one pass. Alright, that left a pretty good radius on the inside. So now we're ready to get set up. We got a piece of material we can work with here. Uh, we'll get set up and bore our hole in the center of this. One inch is the largest uh, metal cutting bit that I've got, uh, so we'll take the uh, drill chuck out now and put the boring head in. One more thing I want to do before I take the drill chuck out. I've got an old 3 8 inch shaft end mill in there now that I have ground uh, on the surface grinder to a good point there. Uh, I use these for center punches, but what I'm going to do is come over here to the edge. Remember I got the DRO uh, zeroed out. Now I'm going to lock that down right there and put a scribe mark, since this is on center, I'm going to put a scribe mark from one side to the other. And give that just a, another couple thousandths. Now I'm just going to run the workpiece where this scribes a line right through the center. Now I think you will uh, see and be able to appreciate what that scribe line is for when, uh, when we get ready to split this in half. So I'm going to come over here and put the boring head in now. Okay, I've got the boring head in now. I've got the table back to zero on the x-axis and I have uh, extended this out <clears throat> till it's right 
till it's just touching now. We're going to take this out to 1.38. So I'm going to get a good cut and then get a measurement. We'll stop right there for a minute and request you guys post a comment. I'm using these uh, carbide boring heads or boring bars in this boring head and all that I've got in this set are getting kind of dull. Uh, I think the extra long one might be the, the sharpest one left and it don't look the best. But I'm considering whether to get something like uh, this indexable boring bar here. This is, these are half inch shafts. Get this in a half inch and maybe cut it off to a nominal length and use that as, as the uh, boring bar in there. I can do that for less than $20. Or you can get a set of these boring bars that uh, uh, have indexable inserts on them, different lengths, for about $65, $70. What do you guys use? Uh, what do you like best? Alright, this one's not cutting at all. All that's doing is ragging that. So let me go back through this set and see if I can't find something a little sharper that'll make that, that depth. Alright, I think this one's going to cut a whole lot better. I made a couple cuts and measured and got about 250 thousandths left to go. So there's 50. Gonna carry that over to the workbench to uh, to see how much I had left to go. 1.38 is what I was shooting for. 1.38. I don't believe I can get it any closer than that. So now we're gonna turn this upright and drill our two holes that will hold this together, and then we'll slit it in two. Okay, I think it. If it beginning of the video, I might have said 632 screws to hold this together, but what I'm going to be using is 832. Uh, I've got a box of 100 pieces of these that are one inch long, which are a bit short. Uh, it just barely gets down to that center line. But what I'm going to do is drill it all the way uh, at least a half inch down into the the bottom piece with this uh, with the uh, tap drill for an 832 and then after after we get it split and all that work done I'll probably come well I'll definitely come back and do clearance in this top half uh, I might even do that before we take it out but do that for the uh, the size of the screw and then possibly also come back and countersink the whole thing.
Okay, after seeing that whole location, I'm not going to be able to counterbore enough for the head to go through without leaving a very thin wall over there. So I guess I'll just go back to the hardware store and pick up as small a pack as possible of these 832 by, uh, uh, by inch and a half. But we can, or well, we do need to, to drill clearance for the, for the screw itself in this top half. Okay, today's not a good day for me and batteries, I guess. <clears throat> not sure when the uh, uh, battery died and lost audio uh, in the last segment. But what I was saying was there was not enough room on the edge over here to, uh, to counterbore for the whole head. So what I'll do is just go to the hardware store, pick up some 832 by an inch and a half long, uh, and then the head will set proud on the outside. All right, we've flipped the part over now. now. I've got a quarter inch end mill in here and located the center of the, uh, of the attachment leg sticking out. So we're going to go down in this. I need to lock my axis. Now I've got the x-axis zeroed out now. I'm going to come down just what looks like a reasonable and that's a half inch right there and that that's leaving me enough space out here at the end I think so we'll go a half inch on each side of zero Okay, so now we got our slot milled in there that will, the screw that holds this back to the tank, provide a little bit of adjustment. So finally I'm going to get set up to split this in two. Alright, I'm pretty sure most of you figured out by now what that scribe mark was for. What I'll do, I've got my, my long reach uh, slit and saw arbor in. And I'm going to line this saw blade up centered on that uh, scribe mark. I'll do that with my eyecrometer. And I'm sure for you guys it's going to look like it's uh, off a bit. But I'm trying to get down here at the same eye level with it. And I think that's going to be it. So what I want to do now is line the, line the saw up just so the blade goes through it and lock the y-axis down. Let's try Okay, that's parted off, and I bet that's going to be worn. Got just a little spot right here on the end where it always breaks off when you're doing aluminum. But I'll carry that over to the uh, grinder and clean that up. Now what we need to get set up to do is uh, tap these uh, two holes under the bottom side. Alright, let's countersink these holes just a little bit or not countersink them, just deburr them. And I've got the uh, tap guide in the dr drill chuck now. So we're going to use that just to center up here.
All right, we're going to start with a taper tap, of course. And that's on the bottom. Now we'll use the uh, plug tap <clears throat> or the bottoming tap. Okay, that's got that whole tap to the bottom. I'm going to move over and do the same thing to this side. Okay, both holes are drilled or tapped now. I'm going to take this out, carry it over to the uh, uh, scotch Bright wheel, do a little deburring. Then I'm going to take the whole clamp, uh, wash it good in the uh, parts washer, put a coat of paint on it uh, to match the rest of the uh, uh, trailer. And then we'll meet out there at the trailer and, and install it. Okay, while the paint was drying, I... Uh, Ran down to the hardware store and picked up some longer screws. Went through my supply and found a, a six millimeter screw that will, uh, or socket head cap screw, that will mount in the insert that's in the tank. Of course, that'll go in there. Also, while the uh, paint was still wet, I took some toolbox liner and just uh, stuck that in inside each of the two pieces. I'm not going to try to carry the camera out there to the trailer. I'll go, or to the little cart spray tank. I'm going to go install this, take a couple pictures, come right back, and we'll do a quick recap. Okay, well, I got the bracket installed. Uh, here's a couple pictures of it in place. Uh, as you can see, I uh, got a few scratches uh, uh, when I turned the trailer over, so I may care to paint can out there, uh, clean this up next time I got the pressure washer out, uh, care paint, paint can out and touch it up a little bit. As far as the flag goes, I decided to uh, mount it on the mower itself. Uh, I only use the uh, sprayer three, maybe four times a year, but the uh, uh, mower gets used at least once a week and some weeks if it rains uh, twice a week. I know I could have made a whole lot simpler bracket to hold this, but as I've said in previous videos, I've got these tools out here in the tin barn. I enjoy using them, and why not do something uh, a little bit extra? Hope you guys got something out of this. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.